All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We, my God, this is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. It's, it's a little bit strange in here because uh, we are, we have in pure um, caution, out of caution, we basically have sent everybody home. <laughs> Amen. So we, we actually have a um, rotating schedule that we were maintaining. Um, but because of the spike, uh, amen, today's November 29th, I believe it is, 29th, amen, I just want to let everybody know, and it's 2020, in case somebody sees this from, from about, uh, you know, 10 years from now. But I, I, I thank God for all that he has done, amen. We are here, um, uh, got a few people here with, not a few, I just got a small number, a few of us here just to, um, just to get things going and the technology going and so on. Um, but we missed everybody. Amen. Good morning, KBIM, and those who are uh, tapping in at this time. Good morning. Amen. We, we love you, and we feel so, uh, our heart is just heavy because a week ago we were all here, and weeks before we were all here, and our hearts are heavy because we're not all here right now. And next week we're going to have just a small portion of our team here, the band, the, the, the worship team, and uh, some of our staff members going to be here. And then we're going to be rotating just like that. Uh, and, and everybody else is going to be uh, home. We, we will at times, um, and, and just let you know, just a little bit of rules. We will at times kind of make, uh, you know, about five seats available uh, for those who would like to come into the sanctuary with us. But we're going to maintain this until the end of the year. And we're going to see what things look like at the beginning of the year. But stay tuned for more information because this thing is kind of fluid. Amen. But anyways, this is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. Uh, it's, it's a powerful day. Uh, and, and I know that there's a lot of things going on in the environment. A um, lot of news. I'm not sure if you're watching the news. Th certain things are going on. But nevertheless, God is still on the throne. Amen. He's still on the throne room. Um, God is a good God. And we're just giving. Why don't you just um, share this out and. Uh, let somebody know that we are on this morning. We have not shut down. Amen. We were still on. So just share it out to some friends, share it out to some family members, and just have them um, tune into the service this morning. There is a word from the Lord, um, but before the word on, from the Lord comes, I'm going to ask Pastor Ken Roy, who's in the midst here with us. I'm going to ask him. He's going to come and he's going to lead us in prayer. Amen. Then I'm going to come back and we're going to greet you with a word. Amen. And you want to hang on. Uh, till the end because we have something special in between in the middle of the word that we're going, going to show you as well. Um, and so we're going to ask Pastor Ken, where is he at? Amen. He's going to come at this time. Amen. And he's going to um, uh, pray us in the kingdom. Come on, Pastor Ken. Run, man. Amen. Come on. You ran track. I think you did. Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Father, we just come before you this morning. And we thank you, O God, because you are a great God. We thank you, O God, that you woke us up this morning in our right minds. And, Father, we know that it could not be of ourselves. It had to be you. So, Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Father, we pray for those right now or even uh, visiting us online this morning. There may be someone in the hospital bed uh, at home not being able to, to, to move as they would like to. So, Father, we pray right now for a healing touch uh, to that person's from the corner of their head to the sole of their feet. Father, we speak your healing power even now in the name of Jesus. Father, visit that person in the hospital. Even those uh, first responders, oh God, we lift them up this morning, Father. We pray for them. Lord God, they're doing a great job trying to heal the sick, trying to uh, do the best that they can. There may be someone in the hospital who may not have a, a person or a family member to, to visit them this morning. But Father, we thank you for that nurse. We thank you for that uh, physician. We thank you for that technician who is doing their best to, to bring comfort and, and, and solace to that person right now. Father, bless them. Keep them. Bless their families in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray even for the police officers, oh God. We pray, oh God, for the firefighters or all those first responders, oh God. We pray for We lift up even pastors across the nation today. 
or uh, uh, preparing their messages and, and want to come and, and be a blessing to the people of God. Father, we pray for the musicians. We pray for those who are doing the work of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, oh God, as we go into this uh, 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 a message of this morning, oh God, that you will touch our, even our pastor, oh God, Pastor Kim, oh God, bless Pastor Lisa, Lord God. We pray, oh God, for the KBM family, Lord God, those who are online this morning. And Father, we pray, oh God, that Lord, they would just come and just join us, oh God, and lift up the banner of Jesus today because this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we come to bless you and to magnify your name, oh God. We come to give thanks. We come to tabernacle with you, oh God, today because, Father, you said the Spirit of God is in us. We are the temple. Father, we thank you. We may even be here in this uh, physical building, but God, we are the church, oh God. We are the, the ecclesia, the call that one. So, Father, we come today to unite in prayer to bless you and to give you all the glory and all the praise. So, Father, have your way today across this uh, barrel, across this state, across this nation, across this world. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people say amen. God bless you and God bless you. Amen. Pastor Ken Roy, thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much for um, greeting the people this morning with a, a powerful prayer. Amen. We trust and hope everyone in your different um, homes and different places are are well this morning amen we hope that um, you continue to trust god even in this pandemic hour uh, there is much to give that uh, god thanks for amen we just came through thanksgiving thanksgiving is not just one day um and and i i know on the calendar it's one day but i believe that every day should be a day of thanks every day should be thanksgiving and I trust and hope that you and your family had a wonderful Thanksgiving day. Um, hope they were able to get together. I know some families were not able to get together as they normally would um, on a year-to-year -year basis. But um, nevertheless, this will be over. Uh, this soon will pass. And I'm not just saying that this soon will pass. I'm quite sure God is not going to allow this to be over us forever. But while he's doing that, while, while this, this pandemic is is still active while it's still active i i um i beseech you dear, therefore brethren that you um spend time with the lord please do not wait for the church doors to be um open all over you know uh, uh, go back to norm as it used to please do not please spend some time with the lord take some time out um doing these these pause these these uh, don't let this be like a norm that that we just go back to our homes and we don't spend no time with the Lord at all. Please spend some time in prayer. Spend some time in the Word of God. This this is you, listen. In order to stay uh, uh, um, strong in the Lord, in order to maintain a strength in the Lord, we need to read our Word. The Bible says, "Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God." So we need, we need to, uh, really need to uh, hanker down and read the word of God. And there goes our, uh, there goes our faith will be begin to build up. Also, we need to stay on these bending knees. Because when we pray, when we pray, something happens in the environment when we pray. Listen, the, the sinner man, those who have not given their life to Christ, they don't really understand what we say pray. You see, before we were saved, uh, before we gave our lives to Christ and we, we prayed, we prayed for only when, you know, when we want to get out of stuff and or we need something from God. But listen, now that we have a relationship with him, we can pray. When we pray, the Holy Spirit is, is really igniting some stuff within us. So when, when we as Christians, as believers say pray, we're not just talking about some mere words. We're talking about a, a bombard in heaven. We're, we're talking about um, getting something through. Maybe it's a prayer of, of healing. We, when we pray, we don't just pray. So please pray. Will you? Will you pray? Will you even fast? Will you do those things that we all need to do? Amen? And that will make you strong and keep you strong. Amen. God bless you so much. We're going to ask you to turn to Luke um, chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, amen, uh, uh, Pastor Lisa is in the building with us as well, but she is uh, running the screens, and Pastor Ken Roy is here, as you can see, he's running the audio, amen, so we got a, 
uh, meager staff here, but we're going to make this thing work. Amen. So let's turn to Luke chapter 17, wherever you are in your kitchen, in your living room, in the car. Uh, maybe you're on the bus. And if you're hearing this years from now, wherever you are. Amen. Turn to Luke chapter 17, verse, verses 11 through 19. I had to go back in the archives and actually pull this up um, because I, I believe that um, uh, God is always saying something. And sometimes they need to say the same thing over again because sometimes we uh, take sometimes uh, or some a long time to really remember or really get what God is saying. So I had to go back in the archive and pull this up and kind of um, reframe it the way the Lord wants me to bring it this morning. So Luke chapter 17, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met 10 men that were lepers. Sound familiar? Which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. Hold on to that. As they went, they were cleansed. 15 verse. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorify God. One came back. And fell down on his face, at, at his face, at his feet, rather, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. There's a reason why that's pointed out. And Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that, that, there are not found that return to give God, to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto them, arise, go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. Jesus said, arise, go thy way. Why? Because your faith have made you whole. Father, most gracious Father, we thank you right now for our faith in you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for there is none like you. Father, we thank you for this season of thanksgiving, Lord God, that Lord, I, we believe that we ought to give thanks unto you in all things, Lord. It is your will. And today, Lord God, we're asking you that you will touch every soul, every heart that is hearing this word. Let this word penetrate, Lord God. Speak until you get through. Talk until we hear you. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. When it comes to being thankful... You don't have to be forced. We don't have to be forced or convinced that it's a right thing to do. I remember that uh, uh, way back when my kids were younger, very young, we would tell them to say thanks to each other. Uh, we would teach them to say thanks. And, uh, and, 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 and sometimes th they would say thanks, and you know it's not really coming from a pure place. And we would tell them, Listen, mean it. Mean what you say. But when you have a heart of thanksgiving, you don't have to be, co be convinced or forced in order to say thanks or know that you should say thank you. Because when you have a grateful heart uh, 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 and a thankful heart, the uh, gratefulness and thankfulness, it comes automatically. No strings attached. I'm not going to tell you thank you only if you do something else for me. Only if you can promise that in the future you will do something else for me so, like, so I'm going to say thank you. Thank you comes from a pure heart, y'all. Comes from a place, from a place of gratefulness. One of the ten men came back. The Bible says he glorify Jesus. He fell down and he glorified Jesus and, and thank him for healing him. Jesus was very astonished and surprised when he saw that 
only one returned. He turned to his disciples who were around at the time. He turned to his disciples and said, strange. He said, did I not heal ten? And where are the nine? Where are the nine? And I'm quite sure his disciples were just looking at him like, I don't know if you don't know Jesus. Well, I sure don't know where the nine are. But one thing for sure, we see that the one that came back. Such a tragedy. I want to speak to you today from the subject matter, the power of a grateful heart. The power of a grateful heart. The power of a grateful heart. Having a grateful heart, it's not just words. It's, there, is, there is something heavy and something deep that comes from having a grateful heart. There is power there. And I'm going to explain to you as I, as I uh, preach this sermon and teach this, I'm going to explain to you that power of a grateful heart. When, you're, when you have a grateful heart, it is, it is powerful. Grateful. Feeling or showing an appreciation of kindness and thankfulness. When you're grateful, it's, it's, it's a show, a demonstration the Bible says the one came back and he, he what? He demonstrated to the Lord, demonstrated to Jesus his appreciation for the healing that has taken place in his body. Yeah, one thing that um, you got to realize is that you don't have to be appreciated or, or, or show forth your appreciation just because something large got done to you or small. Uh, a grateful heart, uh, it doesn't matter how large or how small of a thing was done unto you. But I must say that something great and powerful and miraculous took place with all the ten men. And this one realized that this is something of a miracle of, uh, of powerful that happened, that took place. And I have to go back to say thank you. Because let me tell you something. The Bible says they were full of leprosy. They were full of leprosy. This one man, he knew what it meant to have leprosy because he had it. And he knew uh, what happens when, when you have leprosy back in uh, the biblical times, we call it, but back in those days, and even today, maybe not in the U.S. or in your country, but even today, if you have leprosy, and uh, people tend to kind of, you know, stay away from you, and if you have certain other diseases, people make sure that they stay away from you. But in the subject matter of leprosy, in biblical times, was, it was the most terrible thing to happen to one's body. Because once a person has leprosy, it was considered, it's considered incurable. They didn't have any cure. It's, it was incurable. So once you have it, you got to get out of, out of town. Those who were diagnosed with leprosy, they were banned from society. They were banned until they were fully cured, if they ever got cured. And not only that, somebody can't uh, 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 proclaim themselves to be cured of leprosy. Uh, they just can't do that. Because back then, the priest had to declare you cured. The priest had to say, you are cured. The priest had to say that you are clean. Otherwise, you have to stay on the outskirts of the city. According to uh, the book of uh, Leviticus, uh, where you'll find it in Levit Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 46 thereabouts, you will find uh, how they handled leprosy at the time. And I'll just explain a few of it to you. Uh, the person, this person that has such an infectious disease, one thing that they have to do is they have to uh, tear their clothes. Actually, it has to be worn, teared. I mean, it has to be dehumiliated. 
uh, the hair, you can't comb your hair. Your hair has to be unkept. I don't know if y'all remember when we had shut down in March um, here in the U.S. that uh, that barber shops were closed and uh, a lot of men were going around with beard and sideways and hair locks and all sorts of stuff. Amen. But 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 these guys here or those that were uh, with leprosy, they could not comb their hair. They wanted them to look really terrible. Uh, they must cover the lower parts of their face. They got to hide it because this thing is boiled all over. They got to cover the lower parts of their face. And, 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 and uh, 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 people will know that you have leprosy because your clothes are torn. Your hair looked like a wild man or wild person. And, and you're, you're covered and, and you're on the outskirts of the city. And, and they are passerby on the outskirts of the city. And, and so while you're on the outskirts of the city, every time a pastor uh, come by, uh, every time a person passes by, the, those who are with leprosy has to cry out, unclean, unclean. Don't come close to us. We're unclean. And that's so humiliating. It's one thing that they, they had the leprosy and thrown out from their houses and from their community and from the places that they were. And looking like they're uh, not a human being and not treated as a human being. But every single time a person walks by, they have to cry out that they're no longer a clean individual. They must live uh, alone on the outskirts of the city, out, out of the camp, without any human contact uh, at all. And not only that, but they must fend for themselves. And how would they fend for themselves if they can't come uh, close to anybody at all? So I can see people throwing bread at them and staying far away from them and, 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 and trying to give them some food or whatsoever, uh, but nobody can go close to them. Nobody at all. Just imagine in today's uh, pandemic, imagine if, uh, if we, we, we were to throw everybody who has... Uh, COVID on the outskirts of the city or, or, uh, or put them in some, some huge warehouse and lock them away until they're cured. But it kind of almost come, came close to that because uh, once you have it or you come into contact with somebody who have COVID, uh, you got to quarantine or self-isolate yourselves for about 14 days. So, but there was something similar there. But thank God that uh, we who uh, came down with COVID, thank God that we didn't have to uh, do as they did. We didn't have to cry out, COVID, COVID, uh, stay away, we have COVID. Uh, uh, thank God that we didn't have to uh, be embarrassed by the fact that uh, somehow we, uh, COVID came up on, upon us. Uh, uh, thank God that the government wasn't crazy enough to to lock us in, I, I heard, and I'm not sure if it's true, but I heard in China they were, uh, when it came back, came out in, in January, February, when COVID came out, I heard they were bolting people's houses. They were nailing them shut in their homes, making sure that they don't come out at all. But thank God for the freedom that we have here uh, that we can go in for 14 days and, and some maybe 21 days and, and, and thank God that, uh, that this thing, uh, uh, whatever it might be, whatever comes upon us, uh, COVID or whatever it might be, thank God that he's always in the healing business. God is always healing. It doesn't matter if it's this pandemic or that pandemic or, or this sickness or, or that sickness. Thank God that he always hides us under his wings. So uh, these men, they were on the outskirts of the city, and they were embarrassed, and they were lonely, and, and there were some things that were happening with them. Sometimes in life, we can at times feel lonely and isolated. Uh, uh, so you know, do you know that human beings can, can be one of the worst type of uh, 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 individuals? I mean, sometimes we can ignore people so badly. 
just because they came from another uh, family, just because they don't have what uh, we have, and just because they don't look like uh, we look like, and just because they don't talk like we talk, uh, uh, we can isolate people through the way we look at them and through we, how we uh, behave, our behavior uh, with them. People who came from another country, and uh, I, I, I don't want to go into the con- name of the countries uh, right now, but, but, but we, sometimes we as humans have a tendency of, of treating people really bad and, and cause them to go into isolation. There there's so many gone through this 2020 that, that have lost families and friends. Uh, uh, as this pandemic was just running crazy. Uh, there were uh, some family members and friends were here 12 months ago, six months ago. And here it is, they are, they are no longer here. Not because of cancer, not because of asthma, not because of some uh, uh, something uh, an, of an accident or whatever the case might be, but because of this pandemic, a family member is no longer around, or a friend is no longer around. Uh, and somebody right now might be experiencing some challenges being alone because that that husband is no longer around or that friend is no longer around or that that Another wife uh, is no longer around. Somebody, somebody is experiencing something out there. Somebody is experiencing uh, some form of loneliness out there. Helpless. Have you ever been lonely to the place where you're helpless? Helpless. I don't know what to do. Uh, I, I want to encourage you this morning. I really do. want to encourage you because even in, on the past Thanksgiving, uh, you were, some people were alone. Because they were told, don't get a whole lot of crowd and family members at your home. So some people were really alone. But I want to encourage you today that no matter what you are facing, that Jesus can handle it. Can I get an amen? Uh, I can't hear y'all out there, but you can say amen. No matter what you're facing, I want you to know that Jesus can handle it. Don't you forget that Jesus can handle something. Jesus can handle everything that comes at us. Just, uh, just trust him and wait on him and be of good courage, and he will see you through it all. He'll he see us through it all. Jesus can handle whatever is thrown at him. All we have to do is wait on the Lord. The Bible says uh, uh, in Isaiah chapter 40, it says, uh, they that wait upon the Lord he shall renew their strength. I speak a renewal of strength in you right now. You shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and you shall walk and not faint. I speak into you right now a, the strength that comes from the Father, that, that as you wait, God will strengthen you. While you wait, he will strengthen you. I'm, I'm excited about the strength of the Lord. Because uh, I, one thing, and I'm not going to digress, digress any, but I just got to let you know that even in these pandemic times, uh, I know I'm not the only one, but I know there are other uh, pastors and, and leaders that uh, have gone through challenging times. It's a, it's, it's a wait. It's a wait because we have to balance, we have to balance uh, uh, being in person and we have to balance uh, uh, being um, online and uh, you know we, we have to have this hybrid type of uh, a church you know we we have to uh, worry about and concern rather about those that we can't see you see a year ago uh, at this time uh, Thanksgiving we could see you you were in the building we could shake hands and we sh- could give each other hugs but 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 when the pandemic started and when we had to uh, break everything down and isolate ourselves, uh, the last nine months has been uh, kind of heavy for uh, some of us pastors and, and leaders alike. It has been heavy because we have to care about the sheep. God said, feed my sheep. And, and, and that's one thing. We can't, listen, uh, uh, sometimes you, you, you can tell the shepherd, you can't take, you want to take a break, but you can't take a break. Uh, uh, we, you, you know, uh, we try to go on, you see, we used to go on little vacations, but we couldn't go on vacation uh, because this, this, this time does not cause, call for the normal. 
This time does not call for the normal. This time call for us to do something a bit different until it's over. Uh, but I believe that there will be no turning back to the norm. Uh, it's not time for us to mark time and, and time for us to, uh, to go bury the dead. Jesus told a young man when he was complaining about, uh, you know, I want to come with you, Lord, but uh, I, I got to bury my, the, the dead. I got to see about my family members. I, I can come with you, but I got to see about my, my money. And Jesus' response to, response to him was, let the dead bury the dead. Uh, let me tell you something that God is soon to come. And uh, we need, we need, we need, we need to spend as much time as we can preparing for his coming and 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 those who are uh, pastors and preachers and evangelists and, and prophets out there we need to spend as much time as it, as it is in the word and in the face of God so that we can continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ Paul says in in Romans chapter 1 he says I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power unto God unto salvation the gospel must be be preach. We don't have time to mark time and, and time to, I got to rest up a whole lot. It's time for us uh, to be grateful for what we have uh, and for what God has put inside of us uh, and so we can spread the gospel in every way we can. Uh, I don't know about you, but I have no time to mark time. Uh, this is time for us to uh, put that, uh, that, that rubber to the pavement. I begin to preach the gospel and begin to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some people I heard, they said, I'm bored. What are you bored for? How are you bored as a Christian, as a child of God? Pick up your Bible. Uh, you, you, there are videos out there on, 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 on how to uh, strengthen yourself and, and, and uh, stories of the Bible. And, and how can you be, how, how can you be uh, so bored about reading the word of God and so bored about praying and so bored? about talking about Jesus Christ. How can you be so bored? Listen, if you're bored, you need to get back on your knees and say, Lord, help my heart. I can't be bored about the world. I don't know what to do. I'm locked in my house. I don't know what I can. Read your word. God has created this opportunity for us to get closer to him. This is a time where the bride get close to the groom. It's a time where the bride get close to the groom. We are his bride, and he is the groom. And it's time for the bride to get close to the groom. And how do we get close to the groom? How we as bride get close to the groom? We have to spend time with him. How do we get close to Jesus? We read his word. We read his love letters. How do we get close to Jesus? We get down on bending knees and we say, Lord Jesus, help me. We get on knees and we begin to pray for the world. Pray for our brothers. Pray for our sisters. Pray for the sick. Pray for the afflicted. Pray for those who need needs uplifting. We got a whole lot to pray for. Pray for the government. Pray for the president. Pray for everybody. Pray for your neighbor. Pray for your pastors too. There's no time for us to be so lazy and lackadaisical. It's time, oh God, it's time for the church to, to wake up and come out of that place of lethargicness. And have that grateful heart. Those who were rendered unclean, if they ever become uh, uh, clean again, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Miracle. Only a few in the Bible recorded as to having this type of miracle. Miriam and uh, Naaman, they all have uh, this type of miracle because they were healed of a leprosy that he was told to Damon was told to go and dip a few times in the water and you'll be healed you we don't know how this thing is going to be healed we don't know how this COVID is going to go away I know that they have vaccines uh coming on the way there's vaccine on the way did you hear did you hear there's vaccine on the way listen we can get excited about the vaccine but I'm excited about Jesus more than the vaccine I'm excited about the healing process of Jesus my, my God with one 
flick of the finger, with one wink of the eye, don't you know that God can blow this thing away? Don't you know this thing can go away? Then, uh, and then where would the vaccine be? Well, thank God for you know, the doctors and the scientists and those who work so hard to come up with the vaccine. And I'm not knocking them. But we that are believers in Christ Jesus, uh, we ought not to put our trust in, in all this stuff. Yeah, take it when it comes and make sure it's certified and all that stuff. But what I'm saying is whenever we put our, all of our trust in man, Whenever we put all of our trust in systems, whenever we put all of our trust in other people, oh my God, they can let us down all the time. But Jesus never let us down. Jesus, he never failed. Jesus, he never has never gone back on his word. Be careful who and what you put your trust in, your full trust. Don't sell out to anybody. Ah, we all love our spouses, those who are married. We all love them. But listen, we can't love them more than we love Jesus. We can't love them. Uh, my wife is in the building right now, and she hears me. I can't love you, honey, more I love Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry. I love Jesus more than I love you. I'll tell my kids to, I, I love Jesus more than I love you. Uh, 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 Je Jesus uh, was asking, this, he said, do you love me? He said, whoa, I do love you. Why you keep asking me that? Jesus want to know, do you love him? But if you love him, you keep his commandments. I love the Lord. And I won't take it back because he's so uh, good to me. Uh, so they were isolated. Let me get by with this thing. They were isolated on the outskirts of the city, uh, lonely. They needed something uh, from the Lord, and, 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 uh, and they needed something. And it reminds me of the, the man uh, at the gate of, of, at the pool of Bethesda, rather. He was at the pool of Bethesda, and he was waiting for, the Bible says the angel comes, com comes down once a year, and stir the water, and, and whoever gets into that water first is healed. And this man, lame from his childhood, was sitting by the pool, close by the pool, but not close enough to get into the pool. Uh, the healing can be close to us, and, and deliv deliverance can be so close to us, but then we're uh, so close, but so far away. We, God is close to us, but then we can be so far away from, from God. He's right there, just like Peter walked on the water. Jesus was so close, but then he was uh, so far. And God, the lame man missed uh, his blessing each and every year. How many years have you been missing your blessing, missing breakthroughs, missing wisdom and knowledge and understanding? How many years have we been complaining over and over and over and over and over again? And God is right there. He is not far away. He's not in transit. He's not traveling from a, a far nation. He's not traveling from Jupiter or Mars or Saturn or the moon. He is right here with us. And how many years are we going to miss God being right here with us? They call him Emmanuel, God with us. Those they missing his blessing all this time, but thank God that Jesus came by and saw the man, oh my God, at the pool and say, hey, do you want to be made well? Hey, do you want to be made whole? And he said, look to them, and as the man began to complain, Jesus kind of said, ah, ah, just speak to the hand, shut up. Do you want to be made whole? Well, if you do, pick up your bed and walk. And sometimes we look for God to do all sorts of, of all uh, scalastatics and supernatural stuff and all that. And sometimes the Lord is just saying, just pick up your bed and walk. Stop your complaining. Just pick up the stuff and walk. He, just pick up your cross and, and follow me. Just uh, stop the complaining. Listen, we have a whole lot to complain about. And every time we complain, listen, take the complaints out of your mouth. We need to take those complaints out of our mouths because uh, an ungrateful person is a complaining person. If you're constantly complaining, you're ungrateful. 
Ah, that is hard. Yes, it is. If you constantly have complaint in your mouth, filled your mouth and your belly with complain. You are an ungrateful person and you need God to deliver you from the spirit of complaining. Oh, Lord, it's quiet in the house. Of course, it's quiet. I'm the uh, only a few of us here. Uh, uh, j just, just trying to help you. I'm just trying to, just trying to help. The, the rules in the Levitical system says anyone coming in contact with a leper is also considered unclean and are banned from attending even religious services. Uh, we, we, we're just a few in the house right now, uh, but we didn't ban everybody from their religious practices. Uh, you know, we didn't ban people from reading the word. Did, did we ban you from reading your word? Did we ban you from praying? Let me tell you something. As long as you could just consider the building being the church, you lost it. The church is us. Those that are baptized in Jesus' name, those who are filled with the Spirit, those who are washed in His blood, are you blood washed? If you're blood washed, you are the church. This is the building that the church comes to, to congregate together. But you are the church. The Bible says your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. My God, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of your body. You are the church, my God. Full of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Full of vigor and fire and power of God inside of us. I got the power inside of me. We are the church. Yes, we go love coming to the, into the building, but you are the church. Family couldn't see them. Friends couldn't see them. Sound familiar? Uh, some people who are locked up and self-isolated, nobody could come can come see you. If they do, they got to pull up outside, blow their horn, and wave at you or come to your door and throw something at the, at the step. It just, just, this, this just sounds familiar. Uh, family couldn't see them and friends couldn't see them. And, and uh, the, if they had a job, the job had to fire them because uh, you're not going to be around any longer. The, the church uh, uh, couldn't come to see them or visit them. And uh, society scorned them. It's society scorned their very looked upon them. Uh, they had, hey, listen, they had no cell phones uh, to call, uh, call a friend. There was no, they couldn't send a text message to tell how, uh, uh, how their position is or what their, their status might be. They didn't have any uh, Facebook to post their status to say, uh, still have uh, this disease and still on the outskirts. Could somebody send me some meals? So they have no other communicative uh, instruments to, to communicate. The only f communication that could come out of their mouth is unclean, unclean. That's the only communication that came out of their mouth. They were thrust into into isolation outside of the city. Uh, uh, just like those who uh, suspected that they had COVID thrust themselves into isolation, but you're not on the outskirts of the city. You're still in the city. You're still in your houses. Uh, you're still where you need to be, and that's something to give God thanks for. That's something to bless God and be grateful about. I don't know about you, but you ought to tell the whole world how grateful you are. Every opportunity you get, you ought to tell the whole world how grateful you are about what God has done for you. How grateful we are because we too could have been overtaken by this disease. The uh, word uh, leprosy, uh, it comes from a Greek word, and it, mean, it refers to scabs. Uh, lepra, it means it scabs all over your body, uh, peeling and scratching. Remember, remember Job, how, how the devil came to the Lord, and, and, and uh, when he saw that, everything it took from Job, Job never flint. Job, the Bible says, uh, when Job heard that his livestock were gone, the houses uh, fell on his, his, all his children, and everything was gone. And to make matters worse, his friends came around and, and thought that he committed sin. And then and, and, and Job called him a miserable comforter. How can you be comforting me and, 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 and be miserable at the same time? You're, you're not comforting me. You're trying to judge me. And it scars and, and scabs on their, their skins and and, and, and all sorts of diseases, and they were, they were kind of smited. 
And a leper was considered in the Jewish term, when, when the Jews see you, they consider you to be smitten by God. <laughs> uh, it, 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 they, they say you were smitten of God, and, 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 and that's why we can't get close to you. Remember the Bible says that Jesus was smitten and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. These guys, they were smitten by God as the Jewish, uh, uh, what the Jewish uh, uh, beliefs were. Uh, the, the, the ten uh, were, they were excommunicated. I'm telling you, there's power in being grateful. The ten were excommunicated. They were, they were ostracized. They were uh, marginalized. They were ignored. They were scorned. Have you ever been scorned? Have you, have you ever been marginalized? They were scorned. They were put on the sideline, out of the outskirts of the city, with the garbage. With the, and let me tell you something. On the outskirts of the city, it wasn't a pretty place because it was very close to the dung heap. And the dung heap is where the sewage goes. So they were placed right next to the sewage, not right next to the, the, the stink and, and all sorts of diseases that they could have caught, uh, as well as the leprosy that they had on their body. So they were sidelines. They were isolated, discarded like trash on the, on the curbside. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful especially how you treat, my God, a child of God. Uh, sometimes we, we forget who we we talking to and how we treat one another. Uh, uh, but 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 be, be careful how you treat a child of God. Doesn't matter who you are. Uh, and they were sent to the out parts of the city to live out the remainder of their lives. Simply mean nobody was expecting them back at all. No one had hope for them that they will be back. Family and friends and everybody had to just give up on them and 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 left them for dead. What a horrible state. To be in. The pressure of being an outcast can uh, uh, physiologically and psychologically take a toll on anybody. Especially the, 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 the ten. S psychologically, they were messed up. It, meant, it messed with their mental capacity. Because... They lost all hope. They had to cry out, I'm no good. I'm a sinner. Don't come close to me. They were, they were no good. And that took a toll on them uh, in, in their psyche. Anytime you become isolated, whether by your own demise or by someone else's, it affects you internally and externally. Anytime you isolate yourself and, and I want to be by myself and, and all that stuff, let me tell you something. No man needs to be by themselves. When the ten saw Jesus afar off, the Bible says when they saw Jesus afar off, they lifted up their voices and uh, they saw Jesus coming. Oh my God, I I isn't that something? They saw other people afar off. They probably even saw their loved ones afar off. But something happened when you see Jesus coming after you. Something happens. When they saw Jesus, I imagine they saw hope. When they saw Jesus afar off, I imagine they saw their freedom. When they saw Jesus afar off, they see victory. And the Bible says they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. They did it to no one else, not even the priests. But they knew that there's something about this man, Jesus. Now, strangely enough, they did not ask for food or ask for healing. They asked for mercy. They asked for pity. They, they, they wanted Jesus to have pity on them. What did they think Jesus was coming to do? When Jesus shows up, tell, let me tell you something. He does not show up empty-handed. If you call him, he will answer. And he will not show up empty-handed. They had no hope to be healed until Jesus came 
They had the opportunity to ask for healing, ask for anything they wanted, but they said, have mercy upon us because no one else have mercy upon us. Pity us, Jesus. They called Jesus master, but yet did not ask him for healing. Certain enough, they must have heard that Jesus was going around the countryside healing and feeding the 5,000, raising the dead, cast out demons, healing the sick, calming the stormy seas. No doubt they knew all that about Jesus, but yet they did not ask for healing. Now what, what, what's great about Jesus is that he didn't re reject them like society did. He, he didn't reject them. And that's one thing we got to be careful. Don't reject people. Don't reject people that are, don't look like us and don't talk like us and don't have what we have. We, we must stop rejecting people. Jesus didn't reject the leopards. Instead, Jesus looked and took notice of them and responded to their plea. But Jesus responded in a different way. Although they were asking for pity, Jesus knew exactly what they needed. Yes, mercy was needed, but they needed healing. Yes, they needed some victory, but they needed the healing. You see, Jesus knows exactly what we need and not so much what we want. They wanted pity, but Jesus knew they needed healing. My God, we tend to ask Jesus for things that we think we want, but Jesus said, I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you need. And sometimes we may get upset because we didn't get what we wanted, but Jesus said, if I had given you what you want, then you will come back to me for another want, another ask then, but I'm going to give you what you need. And I'm so glad that he've always done that. Uh, this reminds me of the, the, the story. I don't know if you remember the story of the, uh, the, the blind man at the gate uh, called Beautiful. The gate called Beautiful. Where Peter and the apostles were passing by. Every single day, saints were passing by going into the church. And this man laying uh, at the gate uh, and uh, lamed and he was asking for arms. He was asking for money. He, he was a beggar. He was a beggar. And here comes Peter, uh, full of fire. Here comes Peter. And the man asked Peter for the money. And Peter said, listen, I ain't got a dime. Silver and gold, I don't have any. But, but, but guess what? Such as I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You see, the man wanted money, but J Peter said, no, you need healing. The man wanted to stay as a beggar, but Jesus wanted him to be a, ah, he wanted to be, be well. He, maybe that's uh, something. We are, we are, remain lame. We will remain lame at the gate uh, if we don't pick up our bed. Here goes another one. Uh, Jesus told the man, pick up your bed and walk. Uh, and here's Peter, the protege, uh, told this man to get yourself up uh, and walk. Uh, he didn't, be careful, he didn't tell him to get yourself up and stand. He told him to get yourself up and get to step in. I mean, and step out by faith. Peter knew exactly what he needed. Jesus knew that the ten needed healing. And therefore, he told them, go and see the priest. <laughs> you, you see, <laughs> Jesus could have done it all right there. But he, he, he is in his humanity, he said, we have to abide by the laws that you know. 
<laughs> wasn't time yet to bypass the law. It wasn't time yet to fulfill all of it just yet. Uh, Jesus said, I, I didn't come to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill it. Uh, uh, so it so wasn't time to fulfill that part just yet. So Jesus says, I'm a high priest, but I'm going to send you uh, to the priest. He said, go to the priest, because if I tell you you're healed and tell you to go and not go to the priest, then it, they, they, would, they would think something else of you and of me. So he said, go to the priest uh, so that he may confirm uh, your, your heal. Remember, the priest has to validate that the one filled with leprosy uh, is healed. So Jesus did it right. He sent them to the priest. And the Bible says, as they went, healing began to take place. If they had stood, no healing. But the fact that they're wa listen, stop standing and co continue walking. You're, you're, you're not healed and uh, you're not delivered and you haven't got the total victory because you're still marking time. Standing, complaining, marking time. Don't see your victory anyway. You're just marking time. But Jesus says, go walking. You got to just go walking. And every time you put one foot in front of the other, my God, faith is activated. Faith is activated. Because when you activate faith, it takes you from one level to the next level to the next level to the next level. Every time you stand in doubt, you stand still. But every time you activate your faith, it takes you from one place to the next place to the next place. Faith is action. Faith is without works is dead. Faith without walking is dead. And the Bible says that Jesus said, go walking. And as they went, they were healed. They were walking by faith. Uh, the more they walked, the more they were healed. Uh, 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 some of us just got to get off our, our, our loins and start walking and start doing the work of the kingdom and stop the complaining. Uh, somebody needs uh, to st uh, continue walking. Uh, but, but, Pastor, I've been believing God. Keep walking. Keep believing. The Bible says, knock and it shall be open. Seek and he shall find. The, the, the word knock doesn't necessarily mean you just knock once. You got to keep on knocking. Keep on seeking. Keep on walking. Keep on believing. And keep on uh, trusting. But something alarming happened after the healing took place. I got a little bit of time. I'm going to keep you all in front of this word. Uh, my God, they gave me a little bit more time because there's no, no singers here. Uh, but I got to get this out. I got to get this out. Uh, something alarming happened after the healing took place. The priest approved them back into society. So they could go amongst their family members, amongst their friends, amongst anybody they want to go in front of. But the, the priest approved them. The priest told them, he told them, he said, he, I can see the priest saying, uh, let me see your hands. He said, I can see the priest said, uh, take the veil off your face. I can see the priest says, let me see your back. And I can see the priest said, okay, and he start looking over the individuals like a, a doctor and diagnosing. And I can see the priest says, you are well. But little does the priest, <laughs> the priest know is that Jesus had already done the work. Jesus had already healed them. Jesus had already delivered them. They were already delivered. They didn't need the priest's authorization. Jesus had already done it. But the Bible says, my God, something appalling happened. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God with a loud voice. And you got to understand, the Bible, the Bible emphasized certain words. It, it, it didn't say he just came back praising God, but it said he came back praising God with what? With a loud voice, meaning that I'm not going to be silent I'm not going to be quiet. Something powerful took place. He threw himself at Jesus. Threw himself at his feet. And the Bible says, he thanked the Lord. And the Bible says, and he was a Samaritan. I'm saying, why did it, it it's like, Luke, you had a deviation right here. You said, and he, why did you have to say, and he was a Samaritan? 
But you got to understand back then that the Samaritans were considered dogs. The low class, the Jews considered them low class. Some of them were half and half breed, but they were low class. So, 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 <laughs> my Jesus, uh, Luke was saying that the low class people, person came back and thank Jesus and the saints who are the Jews didn't come back and thank the Lord. It, it, the Bible says, if you don't cry out, I'll cause the rocks to cry out in your stead. Uh, that's why Luke had to emphasize that uh, a Samaritan came by and thanked Jesus. Uh, who was the, the one who came by? And remember the man, he was by the wayside. He was stuck on the wayside. He, he was, uh, the Bible says, robbers uh, came and thieves came and robbed them by the wayside. Uh, and the Bible says the priest came by and, and uh, all sorts of the saints came by. The bishop came by and the prophet came by. Yeah, uh, came by and he didn't do any, they didn't help the man. But the Bible says a good Samaritan, uh, a good Samaritan came by. Jesus is not looking for uh, those who are good and got it all together. He's just looking for a good Samaritan to come by and thank the Lord, to come by and uh, help somebody. He, are you a good Samaritan? He's just looking for a good Samaritan to come on by and thank somebody. So Jesus, uh, Jesus' own did not thank him. Uh, 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 some of us Believers need to go back and thank somebody. Uh, Jesus asked, turned to his disciples, and he said, hey, did I not save? Did I not rather heal ten? What happened to the other nine? Why just this one? It, and, and, and that's an alarming thing that nine out of ten people, ten lepers, found it very hard to say thank you. It was easy for them to, to go ahead and, and, and uh and, 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 and uh, be healed, but it's time for them to say thank you. Every opportunity we get, we should let God know and let the world know how grateful we are. Listen, we cannot begin to count up the message, uh, the, 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 how the blessings of the Lord goes. We cannot begin to count it up. But we need to Tell the Lord how grateful and thankful we are, just like the nine. One returned and ten, rather one returned and nine stayed away. Nine of them went their way. They took the blessing and ran. But the one had a grateful heart. Let me tell you something here. I was reading something in Harvard, a recent, rather, uh, article that was posted by uh, uh, Harvard Health. Uh, it, it says that um, it was, it's entitled, it's a, you can read it, the title of the publication entitled, uh, Giving Thanks Can Make You Happier. That was the title of the publication, Giving Thanks Can Make You Happier. And see, in Harvard's research, they found that gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with a greater happiness. I don't need Harford to tell me that, but I'm just letting you know. If, if they know, then we ought to know that too. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotionally. They relish the good experience. It improves their health. <laughs> Did you hear that? Being grateful, having a heart of gratitude, improves your health, deals with adversity, and builds strong relationships. This man had a happy heart. The one had a happy heart. He was not only healed, but he was set free because he came back with a happy heart. He had a healthy heart. He felt good about what Jesus did. And Jesus turned to him. He said, listen, thy faith have made thee whole. The truth of the matter is, the nine were some grumpy people. They were the one that got something and still looked for more. The nine were ungrateful, unthankful, an unthankful bunch of individuals. Yeah, I said it. 
They had a bad attitude of gratitude. They were selfish. Have you ever given somebody the, 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 as much as you could and they're just selfish and unthankful? The nine were ungrateful. They were unappreciative, disgruntled, dissatisfied, displeased, unthankful, thankless. They felt entitled. They felt that Jesus should have given it to me. They felt that the giver should have given it to the receiver. They felt that they, 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 it warned them to get that. They were unthankful. They went away healed but took on an unthankful spirit. And that's why they could not come back because all that spirit leaped on them because that heart was not thankful. There were no power there in being grateful. But the one had power. They thought only, the, the, the nine thought only in their time of need. And when that time of need was over and fulfilled, they didn't return just to say a word of thank you. They, didn't re they did not return to say a word of thank you because everything, I got everything I need. <laughs> remind me of the church of Laodicea. I got everything I need. I don't need the Lord anymore. I got every. Listen, be careful of all the stuff you accomplish and uh, accumulate and, and all this stuff, and then Jesus is put on the outskirts. Everything was done. They got what they needed. When their bellies were filled, they didn't return to say thank you. When your lights came back on, did you return and say thank you? When situation got better in your life, you were falling off the edge. Did you go back to say thank you? Now there's food on the table and, and your belly is filled. Did you return to say thank you? When your prayers uh, got answered, finally, did you say thank you? Your body got healed. Did you go back and say thank you to those who prayed for you and, and those who uh, were supporting you? Have you gone back to say thank you to those who supported you, who undergirded you, who made sure, hallelujah, that you're not alone on the outskirts uh, in this situation by yourselves, but this one man, this one man had a, a heart of gratitude, uh, had a heart of thanksgiving and appreciation, and he went back. The nine neglected to return to say thank you for supplying my needs. I wonder if you will go back and say thank you. How many times have we neglected to tell somebody thank you? To say thank you to someone. We, we, have, we, have, we have cell phones. We, we can call. We can text. We can inbox. We can do this. We can use all social, so, sort of social media to say thank you. But have we said thank you? I believe that the nine, if the nine had social media back then and text messages and phone where they could communicate with Jesus, I believe that they would not have done it. And this is going to be harsh. Some of you have not even said one word of thanks to some people who didn't done some good to you. You got text, you got phone, you got everything you have at your possession to say thank you. The act of gratitude is not so much for the giver, but the act of gratitude is for you, the receiver, because it, it clears you, it heals you. Did you hear what they said in a, in a Harvard publication? It says, having a heart of gratitude, it heals you. That's why there's power in having a heart of gratitude, because it heals you. It, it mends some broken places. Uh, it gives you some joy and happiness that I went back and said thank you. Now let's pause for a moment, uh, and, uh, and, and I wonder if you uh, can thank somebody for what they've done for you. I want you if you can pause for a moment and begin to thank God in your own way of what he has done for you. I want if you just thank him. I know some of you, m most of you are watching on social media right now, but I want if you can begin to just type in that common area, thanking God for whatever he has done for you. I thank God for my food and shelter. I 
Thank God for my family. I thank God for the, the job you gave me. You restored me. Thank God for restoring my soul. God, I thank you for my life, my health, and my strength. Uh, thank God, I thank you for my church. Uh, I thank you for my church, Christian, uh, church brother and, and sister. I thank you for my children. And that list can go on and on. But I wonder if you can just pause for a moment and begin to just type so the whole world will know that I thank God. Now, no, don't, don't just stop there. I want you to thank somebody. I want you to thank somebody that you can feel. Uh, thank your, uh, uh, somebody who you can see. I want you to not take anybody for granted. Uh, and, and write a word of thanks for, for somebody in your life. Tell your spouse, thank you. Tell your children, thank I dare you to I dare you. No matter, you may feel that, oh, they don't, they don't deserve to be thanked. Who are you to say they don't deserve it at all? I don't care if they have not dot the I's or crossed the T's. There's power in the word of thanks. There's power in the word of being, being grateful. There's power in it. So you ought to put some power out there. You ought to use your power and say, I thank my spouse. I thank my parents. I thank my children, I thank God for my friends. Thank God for my neighbor. Thank God for uh, yeah, yeah, my boss too. Uh, you ought to just begin to thank God. And tell those people that you thank them. Somebody needs to go back and, and tell them thank you. You may not have gotten everything you ask. But a simple word of thanks. A simple word of thanksgiving goes a long way. Give thanks unto the Lord. Give thanks to the Holy One and the Faithful One. I'm going to ask Garth and Leandra, they're going to come right now and they're going to minister to you and hopefully it touches your heart. Hopefully what they're going to sing this morning touch your heart. Jesus Christ. 
This year, I learned the true meaning of being grateful for it all. The good, the bad, the trials, the pain, the way it helped me grow and helped me realize things about myself that needed to be changed. I'm just so grateful, so thankful. We serve a God that is so amazing. So thank you. Hi everyone, it's Thanksgiving night. We already ate, our tummies are full, but we're still full of gratitude, thanking God for all of his blessings. Josh, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving day? I'm thankful day? for being healthy and for being home safe with family. And I'm also thankful for our armed forces who are fighting all over the globe for us. I'm just thankful for being a blessing in people's life and being able to show my natural talents to others to inspire them. Uh-oh. <laughs> Esther, I'm thankful for dance. And I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my KBIM family. Thanking everyone for just being a part of this church family and being blessed. On the count of three, guys. One, two, three. Happy Thanksgiving! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That was, uh, that was aw awesome, 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 awesome. Amen. Uh, we thank God for uh, Garth and Leandra, amen, for expressing how thankful they are uh, regarding the Lord. And I hope that touched your spirit. Um, wow. And thank God for the uh, Taylor family, for 
Amen. Just expressing how their thank, uh, their heart of gratitude towards the Lord and and uh, Ada as well. Amen. That was Ada on as well. Thank you all so much. Amen. For submitting your uh, videos. Just expressing. You know, the, you, the thing about it is that whenever we get an opportunity to express how grateful we are towards the Lord, we ought to take advantage of it. The one man, the one that came back, he had an opportunity to express how grateful he is to the Lord. And he came back and did so. Grateful people are always thankful. Not just in words, but in deeds as well. Grateful people, they're always thankful. Their hearts are soaked with thanksgiving. And despite the circumstances, they, they always have a heart of thanksgiving. Always thanking God. Always giving thanks unto the Lord. Not just words coming out of our mouth, but it's the very sediment of our hearts. A grateful pe person. A thankful person. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 8, 18, it says, In everything give thanks unto the Lord, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is the will of God for us to give thanks unto him in all things. Philippians chapter 4 and 6 says, be careful for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests or your moderation be known unto God. First Chronicles 16, 8 says, give thanks unto God. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among his people. Psalms 136 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies endure forever. That's what the one did. He came back. 10% of the 10 came back. That one was represented 10%. Now, I don't want to go into the 10% stuff when it comes to tithes and offering right now. But all God is asking for one to come back. If one could just come back. And one came back. Psalms 30 and 4 says, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Ah, oh, I got to say that again. Sing unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks. Hallelujah, all he saint, his saints. And give thanks at the remembrance as we remember his holiness. And Psalms 100 says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. Oh, I just want to give you thanks because I have a grateful heart. For all you've done, I give thanks. The Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. Because of what he's done. For all that you've done, Lord, give thanks. I give thanks unto you. The Bible says the one return was a Samaritan. Are there any Samaritans out there? Can God find a Samaritan out there to say, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, hallelujah, my brother, my sisters. I thank you. Someone who will step out and step forward. And regardless of the 10, the 10 didn't come back. The 10 probably said, where are you going? We're free. The priest has set us free. Where are you going? The Bible says he did not choose. This man did not choose the broad way. He chose the narrow way because the broad way, everyone follows that way. But the narrow way, very few comes back to say thank you. I wonder if there's a son or daughter out there 
can go to their parents, no matter how old they might be, how young they might be, and say, thank you. I did not uh, get all that I thought I should have gotten, but thank you. I wonder if there's a friend, uh, a neighbor, I wonder if there's somebody out there that will, that will have this heart of gratitude that will say, I'm that Samaritan. I'm that Samaritan. I am that Samaritan that came back to Jesus. I am that Samaritan today. Are you that Samaritan? Someone with a grateful heart. Someone with a thankful heart. Someone who keeps on thanking God for making a way. Someone thanking God for, for peace and joy. Someone thanking God for miraculous healing. It doesn't matter if you didn't, if you didn't get all that you wanted uh, and get all that you asked for. I just got to thank you, God. I just want to thank you, God. I just want to thank you, God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. In the midst of the COVID situation, people lost jobs and businesses and, and lost loved ones and, and lost home and lost their health. But my God, my God, my God, we are still here. We are still the breaking. We are still here. We are still here in Jesus' name. Because there's a breaking that is happening in the spirit when we begin to thank God. There's a breaking that happens in the spirit. With a grateful heart, we thank you, Jesus. With a grateful heart, we thank you for the breaking. This man, the one, he had a breaking in his spirit. Because, because it, 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 the, there's a spirit that was on him that was broken. The spirit of loneliness was broken off of him. And here he is. And here you are. That Samaritan. Who returned. Some of us are the only ones. Who got saved in our family. Here you are. And you're still hoping. Some of us got put out on the outskirts and got ignored and somebody held your past against you. But here you are, that one Samaritan, that one Samaritan, that one Samaritan who knew what Jesus did for them, that one Samaritan. Are you? Are you that one Samaritan? To say, Lord, I have been neglecting to say and show forth my gratitude. And Lord, it seems like the more and more you give me, the less and less I say thank you. Are you that one Samaritan? Are you that Samaritan? Will you leave the ten? Just because the ten did not go back, will you too go with the ten? Or will you be that lonely one, that only one in the house to say thank you? That only one in the building to say thank you? That only one in that church to say thank you? Will you be that one God is looking for, hoping for everybody to come back to say thank you? But there is that one Samaritan that's amongst us. There is that one to say, Lord, I thank you. I'm coming back not to complain, not to be bitter. Lord, I'm coming back with a grateful heart. I'm coming back with a heart that is filled with gratefulness. Is there one that will say thank you? Is there a Samaritan? Father, in the name of Jesus, your God above all gods, today, God, 
Elijah. We just want to say thank you. Lord, you're not looking for many words. You're not looking for us to do all sorts of things. But just one word of thanks. That's all you're looking for, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for every mountain and every valley. Lord, we say thank you for sickness and diseases that may have come upon our body that did not overtake us, Lord. We say thank you for the good. God, we can't just tell you thank you for the bad. But today, God, we say thank you for the pain. Thank you for the suffering. Thank you for the loss and thank you for the gain. Thank you for my ups and thank you for my downs. Thank you for my mountains and thank you for my valleys. Thank you for the good times and I thank you for the bad times. For my healing, for our breakthrough, for my deliverance, for my job, for provision. Lord, thank you for my home, for shelter, for my family, my children. Every place that you have taken me for deeper anointings, Thank you for ordering my footsteps. Lord, we say thank you for protecting my son, for protecting my daughter, for healing, Lord God, for shielding, for being a mighty strong tower in time of need and in time of trouble. Lord, I got a grateful heart. We have a grateful heart, Lord, of thanksgiving to you. We thank you, Lord God, over and over and over again, Lord. My soul says thank you. Forgive us, Lord, for not coming back. Forgive us, Lord, for not returning back to tell you thank you. To tell a loved one thank you. To tell the giver thank you. So today, Lord, we stand in the place of a receiver. And God, this receiver today is going to give back. God, this receiver going to give back a bountiful thank you. Showing you, Lord God, that we're so grateful. That we're so honored to be considered by you. Forgive us, Jesus. Help us, Lord God, that from this place, from this moment in time, that we have heard this word. Help us, Lord God, that we move on from this place with hearts heavy with gratitude. We're hearts heavy with appreciation, with hearts heavy with kindness. Lord God, help us to move off from this place, Lord God, with the power of thanksgiving. We thank you today, Lord. Lord, that if you have never done anything else for us, again, we'll come back. We're coming back. The Samaritan is coming back. The hunger one is coming back. Lord God, the sick is coming back. One who is defeated is coming back. The hopeless is coming back. The homeless is coming back. The rich is coming back. The poor is coming back. To bow down to you, God. To say thank you. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for rescuing us, Lord. Victimized by the drugs. Victimized by addiction. Victimized by prostitution. Victimized by family members. Victimized by my own self. Lord, thank you. Thank you for not making me out of a victim. But you had created a victor in me. Thank you for victory 
has returned to my home. In the name of Jesus, heal right now, Lord. God, somebody on the sound of my voice, somebody listening to this right now is beginning to tell you thank you. Somebody in their homes and in their kitchen in different rooms right now is beginning to say thank you. Somebody, Lord God, wherever they might be, is beginning to say thank you. Somebody may have stumbled upon this word is beginning to say thank you. Somebody, Lord God, is giving their life to you right now. God is opening their hearts and accepting you as their personal Savior, Lord God. And they're beginning to say, thank you for accepting me into your kingdom. If you're that one, if you're that one, open your mouth and, and let him in and say, God, come into my heart. Come into my soul. Make me whole again. Make me one with you. I, I, I surrender all to you, Lord God, and all to you I freely give. Oh, God, save me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for rescuing me. I'm now your own. I'm now your own. In the name of Jesus. Father, we're now your own. We say thank you. Shahadabo say, we say thank you. Help us not to get into a situation anymore, Lord God where we feel as if we deserve it, Lord God. But God, help our hearts to be marinated with a thanksgiving. Help us not to get in a place of complaints and, and bickering, Lord God, and, and complaining about what's working, what's not working. But Lord God, help us to be in a place that we will come back. That we'll come back, Lord to say thank you. We're coming back. We're coming back. Somebody's coming back. Not just with words, but with deeds. Somebody's coming back. Lord, we thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Come back, come back, come back. Come back, come back, come back, come back. This pandemic has pushed you away, but come back, come back. This pandemic has isolated you, but come on back, come on back, come on back, come on back, come on back. No longer on the outskirts, no longer alone, come on back. No longer need to run to anybody else but God, come on back, come on back. Lord, we come back to you with arms wide open to say thank you. We are the one. I am that Samaritan. I am that one to say thank you. In Jesus' name. Wherever you are, you ought to bless the Lord wherever you are. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Bless him wherever you are and begin to thank him wherever you are. And begin to turn to one another if you're in your home wherever you are and just tell somebody thank you tell them thank you you might not be able to remember what they've done for you but you ought to just tell them thank you a heart of gratitude i am the one god bless you so much in jesus name amen we ask you to continue giving towards the ministry Amen. Those information is coming up. Amen. You're not here in person. And amen. To give through the virtual environment in Jesus' name. You can give through the Cash App and through Venmo. You can give uh, off the church website, kbimnow.org, www.kbimnow.org. You can go there and you can click on give. I mean, you can give from that direction. Also, if you do have, can have our phone number, rather our email address, Amen. You can email us the amount you would like to give, and we'll send you an offering invoice. Amen. And then you will give through that method. So if somehow you don't trust the other way of giving, you can uh, email. Uh, here's the email address now. Impact. Impact. I-M-P, as in Peter. A-C-T. Impact at kbimnow.org. 
So you can email that, send an email to that address. You might say, Pastor, I don't, I, I, I'm uncomfortable giving through Cash App and Venmo. That's why maybe I have not been given. But email impact at kbimnow.org. Should be on your screen right now. You can also give through text. You can give through text. That message was already up. But if you email us, we'll send you that text information. Amen. Continue to love upon one another. Amen. Continue to pray for us in the name of Jesus. And continue to tune in. Amen. And be grateful for those who are around you. We love you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Be well in Jesus' name.